this presentation, you will learn about structuralism in Indian anthropology. Structuralism as a school of thought has remained influential in the various anthropological contributions of various scholars. However, its application and interpretation have differed from one scholar to another. Within the Indian society, anthropological studies have had a niche in the pre-independence as well as post-independence periods. Structuralism as a tag largely fits the contribution of the French anthropologist Louis Dumont for his single major work known as Homo Hierarchicus. Dumont's contribution has left a mark on the Indian anthropology forever. As Berger puts it, Dumont's theory of hierarchy and his view of Indian society provided the ground for a great deal of debate in the 1970s. Not only were Dumont's daring arguments discussed and many weak points in his theory exposed, his contribution also served as a foil for new theoretical developments, an indicator of the continuing relevance of Dumont's work, not only of Homo Hierarchicus, but also beyond Anthropology of India, is the ongoing flow of publications dealing with his theory of value, which has been put into dialogue with many new ethnographic contexts. While the strand that reached India with Dumont was that of French structuralism, anthropology has indeed spread globally. The study of man, anthropology, that gained currency in the 18th and 19th centuries became increasingly elaborate and relevant to human living. The major exponents of anthropology, the intellectual tradition, came from France, Germany, Britain and America. Since the beginning, anthropology has witnessed grand diversification in its focus and specializations. This diversification includes structuralism, evolutionism, neo-evolutionism, hermeneutics, neo-Marxism, feminism, and so on, with many new minute specializations coming up globally. Anthropology thus remains an important science of humankind. Structuralism in Indian Anthropology Since independence in 1947, trained anthropologists have conducted ethnographic research in all corners of India, though anthropological attention has not been distributed evenly. While doing ethnographic and anthropological research in India, scholars employed certain general perspectives. The analysis and interpretation of the data then depended highly on these perspectives adopted. Apart from the study of what were variously termed scheduled tribes, aborigines, adivasis, animists, or backward Hindus, anthropologists did not pay much attention to Indian society prior to independence. It was not in fact until the 1950s that the discipline adapted its field techniques and theories to the study of a civilization such as India. Structuralism as a theoretical approach or perspective was imported and adapted to understand Indian social structure and culture. The profound contribution for bringing the structural approach to the Indian society can be credited to Louis Dumont, a French anthropologist and Indologist, himself a student of Marcel Mauss. Dumont was further tremendously influenced by Levi Strauss's structuralism. The entire Indian social structure was eventually reworked with the advent of Dumont on its anthropological research scene. According to Parkin, although a structuralist, Dumont was far from being a slavish imitator of Levi Strauss, even though this equally great figure was an early influence on Dumont's work on both kinship and India. However, structuralist and ideologically focused his anthropology may have been, Dumont kept a place for the empirical as well as the ideological. His model of hierarchical opposition can be seen as a means of relating the two. A significant part of Dumont's achievement has therefore been to retain and develop structuralism by incorporating rather than excluding the empirical, as Levi Strauss often does quite explicitly. Homo Hierarchicus, Dumont's classic analysis of caste and the book for which he is best known, followed in 1966-67 and marked a turning point in his research. For this, Dumont has been outlining his approach to the Indian society from the mid-1950s. 
Although Dumont's book was taken being analytic, deductive, theoretical, and at times difficult to digest, it nonetheless signaled the end of the village studies era of 1950s and 60s. From 1950s onwards, anthropological developments took new turns. Till then, it was the American and British anthropologists that were influential. But after 1950s, the French structuralists, particularly through works of Levi Strauss, became highly influential. For Dumont, caste, not the village, was to be the focus of anthropology of India. As early as 1957, he and Indian anthropologist D. F. Pocock explained, whether a man is speaking of his own village or of another village, unless he positively specifies another caste by name, he is referring to his caste fellows. To these two scholars, the Indian village did not even have a sociological reality. The dwelling place of diverse and different castes, it was more an architectural and demographic fact than a social one. Having thrown the village out of anthropology, Dumont went on to raise the debate about caste and Indian civilization to an entirely new level. For Dumont, by contrast, caste is not an observable reality in the first place, but a state of mind. This means that caste cannot be explained merely as a particular form of social structure or a particular type of social behavior, but primarily in terms of ideas and values. Like Durkheim's collective representations, such ideas and values are basic categories of thought that are social in nature. Moreover, adopting Levi Strauss's structuralism, Dumont stresses the relational properties of such ideas and values which are integrated into the general cognitive systems he calls ideology. He therefore speaks of hierarchy as a structuring principle which he claims to have detected in classical Vedic texts dealing with the fourfold societal model of the Varna. Religious status, as expressed in the opposition of pure or impure, is for Dumont the key value of Indian society and it is represented by the Brahmin priest in the Varna model. Within the ideology, this value does not merely stand in opposition to its antithesis, pa represented by the Kshatriya Varna or the king, rather it encompasses the latter. Religion, the pure and the Brahmin, thus represent society as a whole. While according to Dumont, on the ideological level, the religious is thus always superior to Pa, on the empirical level the reverse may be the case, the king being, in terms of Pa, superior to the materially dependent Brahmin priest. Dumont situated anthropological understanding of Indian civilization at the confluence of ethnography and classical Indology. Since key Sanskrit texts promoted the Brahmin priest as the center of the social order, Dumont saw the value of the caste system to be what the Brahmins embodied and stood for, purity. He suggested that all of Indian society actively supported and surrendered to this purity and that even those castes that had secular power willingly subordinated themselves to the Brahmins. For Dumont, then, the continuity of Indian civilization was not a function of geographical networks between various localities and far-flung culture areas. Continuity was in the heads of Indian people consisting of categories that were ideological, structured, and of course, internalized. In identifying non-modern societies as those which fuse fact and value and modern ones as those which separate the two, Dumont was clearly following this Durkheimian trend. Dumont's dioctomy differs, however, in that it is ultimately resolved as another hierarchical opposition because even modern societies, though thinking of themselves as egalitarian, are ultimately compelled to recognize the hierarchies that are inevitably contained within them. This is partly because modern societies are themselves not entirely free from all manifestations of non-modern thought. This is also one respect in which Dumont recognizes the empirical as distinct form through though valued less than the ideological. 
the superior encompassing value of purity and the clear distinction between religious status and power are the main conclusions dumont draws from his analysis of the varna model having postulated this ideological structure as basic for understanding the caste system he confronts his theory with ethnographic findings relating to marriage commensality and local authority not only does dumont argue that all these social fields and relationships can be explained as manifestations of ideological structure he also claims that hierarchy as defined by him is a general feature of systems of ideas as such he claims to have added another dimension to levi strauss's model of binary opposition Clark Bessis further states that Dumont's anthropology was also deeply structured around the imagination of difference that is engaged with differing conceptions of religion, self, kinship, political authority, morality and world view in east versus west. As he methodically and tirelessly repeated, the cause teaches us a fundamental social principle hierarchy. Indian social categories and groups are framed in terms of either superiority or inferiority to one another. Dumont, however, insisted that these hierarchical classifications were made with regard to rank, importance, and seniority, but not power, status, or authority, as in the case for Western structures of stratification. The opposition of the pure and the impure encompassed the social and the political. a fact that explained why in indian tradition the king ranked below the brahmin as parkin puts it for dumont hierarchy thus refers to the articulation of the fundamental values of a society's ideology not to their expression in social forms per se though this also occurs in non modern societies ideology is the unity of fact and value modern man conversely habitually separates them and thus equates ideology with false consciousness in dumont's own words i call ideology a system of ideas and values current in a given social milieu what is a predominant ideology it is not exactly the ideology of a majority of the people nor something stable that would be seen to underline historical changes it is rather something that comes spontaneously to the mind of people living in the cultural milieu considered something in terms of which these people speak and think and which is best revealed by comparison with other cultures the composition of homo hierarchicus suggests that the argument is deductive in nature a general theoretical hypothesis being confronted with empirical data which might also lead to the assumption that theory comes first and ethnography the empirical second there is much in dumont's writings that supports such a view for instance the way in which he delegates empirical aspects to the residual level however homo hierarchicus was the end product of 3 to 4 years of ethnographic research in south and north india and the consequence of an intensive engagement with the ethnographic literature of his time as the successor of shrinivas at oxford in the early 1950s dumont became a close associate of evans pichard and david pollock and closely aligned with the british empirical tradition of anthropology in general it is fair to say that throughout the 1970s and much of the 1980s american anthropologists working in india devoted themselves to the project of rebuking dumont's homo hierarchicus in his review gerald berman for example wrote the characterization of caste in this book accords well with accounts provided in the written traditions of india's elite and reported by their contemporary representatives but not with the experiences and understanding of the lowly for their part anthropologists mackin marriott and ronald indin contended that dumont's comparative sociology was ethnocentric and that dualistic categories of purity and pollution status and power did not do justice to the cognitive assumptions prevalent in south asia thus the judeo christian notion of a unity of body soul mind and conscience thought and action which is summed up in the concept of the person that dumont calls the individual does not apply in india thank you for watching the presentation